crazy how fast we can run up the ladder of influence. And we get, let me just tell you, you actually don't need to go to the gym. You are getting tons and tons and tons of exercise, running up the ladder of influence, jumping to assumptions, drawing conclusions, and acting and speaking out of those. morning, as we uh, move into holding the vision of love, and we're going to talk about um, the way in which we raise each other up um, with our communication. Um, or maybe we don't raise each other up <laughs> with our communication. Maybe, maybe uh, our communication is not uh, about raising each other up, but about being right, getting our point across making sure we are understood, which usually translates into agreed with. Um, and um, yeah, and so, so we're gonna, t we're gonna this, is the, mm, this is the one of the big practice pieces in our relationships and in our romantic relationships especially, but in every relationship that we have, these things, um, these things are really important. So I'm gonna share with you the four most significant things that I've learned about communication. Um, these are the four most uh, seminal ideas that will help us um, to actually raise each other up. And, and um, we, Karen t spoke in the first week of this month, she really talked about how important it is to, to raise ourselves up, to, to know who we are, to do the work, to be present with ourselves, and to really love ourselves, sort of regardless of what's been told to us, regardless of what we've heard, regardless of how we've been treated, but to really hold ourselves um, in that space. And then last week we talked about how um, the, the ability to see the truth in another person, to really see that truth and to speak from that truth, um, really begins to build uh, this uh, healthy, happy, sane relationship that we want to have. So, um, so the four, here, here we go, the four most important things that I have learned about communication. So the first one is that there are five levels of communication. And these levels of communication have to do with the intimacy of our communication. And so what does intimacy mean? What does it mean to be intimate with someone? Yes, we can be physically intimate with someone. But what does it mean to be intimate, even if it's with not somebody that we are in a romantic relationship with? Vulnerable. Vulnerable. What else? Open, authentic. authentic, trusting, right? There's all, there's, a, there's an ability um, for us to show our deepest selves and to see, and there's a safe space created where another person can show their deepest self. So most of us start out with the first level of communication, which is the cl cliche. Hey, how you doing? I'm fabulous. <laughs> see you later. Right, this is the cliche level of communication. Uh, I would say probably 50% of our communication out in the world is right is at this level. You do this with you know clerks and with lots of people in that we work with, um, and it's a very um, surface level of communication. And basically, it says, I, I, "I see you. You know, I know you're there, but I'm not really going to show you a whole lot of myself, and and that's good." The second level of um, this, the next deeper level of communication is events and people. So you're going to stop at the store on the way home and get the milk. Uh, did we did we make arrangements to go visit the friends? Do we do we have um, you know what happened at work today? You know my boss said this. Not now I have to do this project. And um, right events and people. Did you see it was on the news? Did you watch that show? Oh, let's talk about that show. That show that you ha are not watching. And let me tell you how fabulous it is. Right? We're talking about things external to us, events and people, things that are external to us. And we're beginning to um, see if you are interested in the same kinds of things. We're interested, we, we, wanna, we wanna see what your level of response is, um, that sort of thing. This is a very, very safe, extremely safe level of communication. 
The next level of communication, which is a little more intimate, is that I'm going to now share with you my, my ideas and opinions about these things. So, you know, my boss asked me to do that project, and I, I just I feel overwhelmed. I don't think it's my job, and I think he's really a jerk for asking me to do that. That is my opinion. That is my, that's my opinion, and, that's, and my idea is he should have gone to so-and-so because that really is their job. That's their job. He should have done that. So I'm being a little more vulnerable. I'm showing you actually the opinions and the ideas that I have, and I'm interested to see whether you're going to agree with me. Right? And if I'm really interested in establishing a relationship, if we're interested in establishing a relationship, we might actually explore some of those ideas and opinions. Um, but it is, um, it's an opportunity for us, to say, for us to say what we think about things. Ideas and opinions are what we think about things. The fourth level of intimacy is now, this is where we start getting a little more authentic, a little more vulnerable. I'm going to talk about feelings and needs. You know, I really feel overwhelmed by this thing that has happened with the boss, and I need to go in there and talk about it with that person, and I need your support in that, and I need, oh my God, I'm, I'm, I don't, do you see what I'm saying? I'm, this is now, I'm in a pretty vulnerable place. And you can say, well, I don't know what's the matter with you. Just, just go in there and tell them what you think. Or you can say, wow, I, I see that, that's, you know, that, that that feels a little hard to you. How can I support you? Right? Do you see? But we're now at the level I'm, I am being, I'm exposing, we're exposing ourselves, we're being quite vulnerable, um, especially about our needs. To be, to be able to speak about what we need, what we desire. It doesn't always have to be, you know, I need you to be different or I need you to say it something, but it can also be I really, I, I really need to go on vacation or I desire, you know, a different kind of an ex work. I'm, do you see what I'm saying? Right? It's not just needs in, a, in any kind of a negative or emotional way. So I'm really being very vulnerable and exposing myself. Now, the most intimate conversation that you can have with someone is to talk about what's going on in our relationship. Might be also the hardest, right? This is true in romantic relationships. This is true with that boss, going into that boss and saying, you know, it seems to me, it, I feel as though... Um, our relationship is you t that I feel gr taken for granted. You think that I'm going to just, you know, jump in on these projects, and I'm not certain that I can work under these kinds of conditions. I need more support from you. I, I really want to talk about what's going on here so that I can, I can be... Do you see what I'm saying? That's a hugely vulnerable and open place, and we have to find that measure of trust to be able to really speak to each other in this form. When we are willing to talk about what's going on between us, it is the most intimate form of conversation, and it is probably the one we avoid the most, right? Especially in, in conversations that are, that are slightly outside of the arena of our most romantic relationship. Usually when we want to talk about what's going on between us, we go over here and we talk to our friend. Can I tell you about what's going on? Right? And, and, we, and we talk about it over here, but we're not actually talking about it with the person with whom that situation or whatever it is is going on. Which is why here at CSL Dallas, one of our guiding principles is direct and open communication. Direct and open communication is an ability to share my ideas and opinions, my, uh, uh, my willingness to speak about my feelings and needs, and a willingness to talk about how that's impacting what's going on between us on a committee, at, in a personal level, and of course, in our personal and most intimate relationships. And you see, th this going deeper in this scale of intimacy is more and more and more possible when we and our closest people, our, our romantic partner, our most intimate partner, our family, um, when we are really practicing the first two things that we talked about this month. One, 
really being clear about who I am and loving that and being, you know, being on board with how I show up and how I came here to be. And two, seeing that about you, seeing the truth about who you are and really wanting to raise you up. When, I'm, when, when we are establishing that within ourselves, and here I'm gonna, just, I'm gonna just put a little twist on it, it's not actually the other person we're trusting. We're actually trusting the divine presence, which is right where I am, right where you are, and right in what's between us. Because the infinite power and presence is omnipotent, omniscient, everywhere, it's everywhere present. Which means it's in this situation too. And when I trust that, then when we trust that, our ability to be open and vulnerable and authentic is, ma is massively increased because I don't require you to be perfect. We talked about that last week, right? I don't require that of you because it's not you actually I'm trusting. Now, granted, in our most intimate relationships and with our family and our close people, we do actually want to trust that person. And what happens is by being able to share our ideas and opinions, really talk about our feelings and needs, and then really move into that place about what's going on between us, by trusting the universe and trusting this process, I will learn to trust you and you will learn to trust me. So the most intimate conversation is to actually talk about what's going on between us. And that doesn't have to be a bad thing. I mean, it just, we don't have to talk about what's going on between us negatively. We can also talk about what's going on, be on between us positively. But to bring that open and to the surface, how vulnerable it is, is it to say to somebody that you don't know whether you're their best friend, but they're your best friend and you want to tell them that, right? It's a vulnerable place and yet very authentic. So really paying attention to where we are with people and what kind of, what, you know, what's the primary level of conversation we're having with them will really help us gauge how willing we are to be intimate with that person, how willing they're will to be intimate with us and whether or not we are building this, this deeper relationship. And the way that we can move, move through these levels is actually begin ourselves speaking at the, level, at the next level more intimate. And, and so if you're talking about ideas and opinions, right, if you start speaking at the level of feeling and needs that invites the other person to match you there. If you're then talking about feelings and needs and you start talking about how that's showing up in the relationship, you invite the person to match you there. Now, they may or may not be able to do that. They may or may not be willing to do that. But, but that's how you can, you can't skip levels. You can't go to, from cliche to feelings and needs, <laughs> right? They will run in the other direction. <laughs> It'll be gone so fast you won't know what happened. <laughs> But, you, but we can really work on this. And, and, you know, and this is one of the things that I've discovered, in, um, especially when I was raising a child. It felt, like, it felt like my communication, especially with my primary partner, ended up revolving around events and people, which basically meant it ended up revolving around scheduling and shopping and managing the household and the doingness of the thing. And are you going to do it? And what are you going to do it? And let's get our, you know, and it's like, but, but do you see that that's only the second level of intimacy? And if our, if our primary relationship revolves around that or simply ideas and opinions, what I think about what's happening in the news and what I think about what those people are doing, what I think about my job and my boss, and blah, blah, do you see, we're, we're not moving into that more intimate level of relationship. And then this is when relationships feel stale and kind of boring because all we're ever talking about is whether or not we're going shopping. Do you see what I'm saying, right? Okay. So paying attention to this, um, it begins to open up our um, possibility of, of knowing where we are and then beginning to actually speak from a more open, authentic, and vulnerable place. To actually make the connection in... Mm, in the human experience that we already know is happening spiritually. 
right? We already know we're connected spiritually. We already know we're one. We already know we're part of the whole. We're already all of that. But it is in our communication that we actually bring that out. We bring that in the, to the forefront and we can, and we can um, enjoy it and revel in it and experience it um, when we're actually talking with each other. All right, so the second thing is a whole other fabulous little pyramid. Um, this is about how we communicate. So we're gonna, we want to get a little more intimate. We want to talk a little bit at a little deeper level with the people that we love in our lives. So now we have to talk about how we communicate. Okay, are you ready? This is called verbal and nonverbal communication. Uh-huh. 7% of what you communicate is the words. 7%. So all those times that you spend figuring out what you're going to say, 7% is the words which you speak. 38% is the tone of voice the tone of voice. And of course, where did we learn our tone of voice? At home, from our parents, from our friends at school, from the TV, from ma movies we've watched, whatever it is, we have learned, oh man, we can, we can say yes and no in about 40 different ways, right? All based on tone of voice. Now notice that the word yes or the word no is only conveying a small portion of what you mean. A whole boatload of other meaning is being conveyed in the tone of voice. 55% is nonverbal, neither words or tone. If it's not words or tone, what is it? Body language. So give me some examples. Arms crossed. Leaning in. I'm like act actively interested. Eye contact. Eye rolling. <laughs> Should be different than eye contact, right? <laughs> Looking at the phone. Okay, I'll be, yes, I'm listening, uh, I, but I'm just going to finish this thing here, right? Being distracted. Me, uh, me, Karen, and I sit, we're sitting, we're having a really great conversation, and right behind her is the bird feeder and the beautiful cardinal that's just come to the bird feeder, <laughs> right? And she sees my eyes moving over to the bird feeder. <laughs> you're not listening, you're, you're right, I got distracted. Uh, there I, uh, ah! <laughs> facial, expressions. facial expressions. Oh, and are, do we have 100% clarity about every facial expression? <laughs> Although we have a fair amount of excellent interpretive skills. We really do. They've done tons and tons of studies on um, the ways in which babies and children and adults respond to facial expressions. And that is communicating. All of that is communicating. Now we teach, uh, we teach in our um, spirituality, we teach what? We're responsible. We're responsible for what we're creating. We're responsible for our reality. We're responsible for what we're doing. So, so we are absolutely responsible for our words, right? We sing the song, um, um, I need you, I, I, won't <clears throat> I won't harm you with words from my mouth, right? <clears throat> but that's only 7%. We have to be responsible for the tone of our voice and for our nonverbal cues that we're giving. And, um, and, and again, if we're, if, we're down at our, if we're down at our most intimate level of conversation, what's going on between us, and we're having a conversation, <clears throat> let's say I'm at the dishes, I'm doing the dishes, and Karen wants to speak over here, right? We can actually have a very intimate conversation if I can say to her, look, I'm just gonna keep doing the dishes because I know we're having a time crunch, but I'm, I really am listening. So, so I'm, I'm, I'm letting her know that the nonverbal cue actually isn't, you know, doesn't carry the meaning that it would maybe carry if I'm just doing the dishes and not paying attention. And so, and so we have to attend to these things. 
<clears throat> and, and we are responsible because who's the sender of the words, the tone of voice, and the body language? Right? It's right here. Right? And, and this, is, this, is a, this is part of all of that work that we talked about in the first and second weeks of self-awareness, the willingness to really pay attention to our own internal patterns, our projections, all of those things, right? And the ways in which we learn to behave, we actually have to, and we, talk, we do this in all of our classes, we have to pay attention to our thinking because that, our belief systems, is running that tone of voice and that nonverbal communication. Sometimes, sometimes it's just habit. We're just not paying attention, right? We just learned how to um, communicate in that way. And so bringing this to, to awareness, that's the other thing we really talk about here. We have to be conscious as best we can, right? Nobody's doing this perfectly. I don't do this perfectly either, even though I know all this information. <laughs> I have to, you know, I have to work on it just like everybody else. Keep working on it. Can I, can I speak, can I really speak in a neutral tone of voice? Can I really ask questions in an affirming tone of voice? I mean, that takes practice, especially when, you know, my father always asked me questions and it always meant prove it, right? His question, it was always came with a prove it um, energetic. And so, um, yeah, so, so these are, and these are things that we can all, they're all skills we can learn. You don't have to change who you are fundamentally are and how you fundamentally came to be here, who you came to, how you came to show up. These are skills that we learn how to do, and it starts with awareness and then taking responsibility. And of course, it's easier to get away with tone of voice and nonverbal communication that is sloppy when we are at the cliche event and people and ideas and opinions levels of communication. You can get away with a lot. Because people aren't, because we're not as vulnerable and open. And we can be pretty sloppy and, you know, and then we can, you know, banter. That's where all the banter happens and the sarcasm and the let's, you know, build on each other's stories or whatever. But, but as we get into those really deep levels of feelings and needs and then talking about our relationship, these things are impacting us in ways that we, that we, that we, can't, we can't be conscious enough of how it's impacting us. So, <clears throat> five levels of communication, um, and then we have verbal and nonverbal communication. And <clears throat> these are the ways in which we practice our principle of being conscious, being aware, and taking responsibility for who we are and how we show up and how we're, how we're being in the world and how we're being in our relationships. Okay, <clears throat> now, <laughs> so, so what happened? I'm so glad you joined us today. That makes you a part of CSL Dallas. And we love that our community continues to grow. And we also love to give great spiritual content. And a way that you can participate in our community is financially give to it. It's easy to do so. Go to CSLDallas.org and hit the Give button. Or you can set up a text giving mechanism at 972-954-4404, a safe and secure way to send us money whenever you watch a great message like this. So thanks for giving and buckle up because here comes the spiritual content. <clears throat> now. <laughs> so, so what happens when we're in communication with someone is this wonderful thing called the ladder of inference. We talk about this in foundations class. We just don't use this psychological language. We talk about it as our hidden beliefs. Our hidden beliefs and the past ideas and the past experiences that we've had that are now running our behavior. That's the language that we use here from a spiritual metaphysical point of view. In the psychological realm, in the realm of communication, this is called the ladder of inference. And so, so let me share with you how the ladder of inference works. Number one, we observe data. You said you were gonna be home at seven, it's now eight o'clock. And there was no phone call. What do we do with that? Well, the first thing we do is we select data out of that information. Ah, you didn't even bother to call. We select the data and we add meaning to it. Well, you didn't bother to call. Do you hear the meaning? 
We add meaning to the fact that you didn't call and you're an hour late. We add meaning to it. Well, you didn't bother to call. So we make an assumption. Well, obviously I'm not important to you. Obviously, you were too busy to call me. Obviously, you don't care about our relationship, which is the conclusion that we draw. Well, you obviously don't care about our relationship because you didn't call. And we adopt a belief there is something seriously wrong with you that you don't care about our relationship enough to make that freaking phone call. And so now I am going to speak and act out of that. <laughs> Do you see how fast we can run up the ladder of influence? And we get, let me just tell you, you actually don't need to go to the gym. You are getting tons and tons and tons of exercise, running up the ladder of influence, jumping to assumptions, drawing conclusions, and acting and speaking out of those. This process happens like that, right? This is what we teach in all of our classes. That the moment, some, and, and so observable data, right? We are an inundated with six billion bits of information every nanosecond. I, I, I can't even bend my mind around that number, right? And all of our senses and all of our psychic senses and our physical senses are all taking all of that in. And if we had to process every single one of those bits of data, we would be, we would be in a padded cell is what we would be, right? And so we are designed, our, our um, um, uh, reptilian, limbic, and re cerebral cortex are designed, all of the parts of our brain are designed to filter out extraneous pieces of data, pieces of information that aren't really important at the moment, that don't feel like, the, you know, there's no threat or there's, right? It's, it's designed to do all of that. And what's the piece that we add? all of our filters. That's the piece that we add, our filters. And so what happens is we adopt a belief and we act out of that belief, right? And then that, that, that cycles back into the way in which we select data. And then we select data and then we keep running around this circle. We keep running around the whole thing over and over and over again. And we keep reinforcing the old patterns, the old ideas, the old beliefs. Um, and we keep acting and speaking out of that, right? So, so where is the entrance point to change it? At the very bottom of the ladder. To not get on the ladder at the first place. Observable behavior. Do you know what we call that in spirituality? We call that detachment. Can you speak about what's going on without adding meaning or assumptions or drawing conclusions? Can you simply say, we had an agreement you would be home by seven, you came home at eight, and I didn't receive a phone call. Now let me tell you how I feel. I was worried, and I need for you to call me. Is that not a very different conversation than, than what I showed you as I ran up the ladder of inference. It's an entirely different conversation. But do you see, to get to observable data, I have to be able to be the, the witness in my life. I have to activate the observer, which is why our spiritual um, teach, um, uh, technologies are so important, our meditation, technology and the willingness to, to, to critically think about the, the voice that's saying, that's, that's feeding us running up this ladder of influence to be able to recognize that voice and to see, oh, there's that hidden belief again. Oh, there's my mother again. Oh, there's <laughs> my father again. Oh, there's the past lover again. Oh, you know, whatever it is, right? To be able to see that. The, the place that we, the only way to break the ladder of influence, uh, inference is to not get on it at all. Because once you're up and running, you're all the way at the top and it actually comes out of your mouth and then you think, oops, I, I, didn't, I didn't mean it that way. Which is not a bad thing to say, right? Because now we have to own up to the fact that we've run up the ladder of influence and we've added meaning and made assumptions and drawn conclusions and supported our belief and we've then projected it out on you. 
And, and so owning up to that, right, is taking personal responsibility for the fact that this has happened. It's not, it's not that you're never gonna do this. When you can never do this, you will actually turn pink and transcend, <laughs> right? You will. Or you will be able to say, get up off your bed and walk. Because you will have, you will not select data for the physical universe. You will not add meaning that that person is sick. You will not make the assumption that they can't be healed. You will not draw the conclusion that it is a, that is a done deal. And you will not adopt the belief that this is the way it has to be. Do you see what I'm saying? You will say, get out of your bed and walk. So these, so, so observable behavior to really, really try to breathe the observer. And of course, we have to observe our own behavior too, not just the other person's behavior. It's our own behavior, and then we select data out of it. Like, well, I didn't really, I didn't really, I was, you know, we can select all kinds of data out of, out of our own behavior as well. This, this, is, this is where our spiritual tools really, really, really support the health and well-being of our relationships, right? So, so our observable behavior um, is the place where we enter into this. Um, now, lest we think that this is always about challenges and problems and fixing our relationship and because, you know, blah, blah, blah. This, let me just, uh, you know, you, uh, if you do not read anything else, you must, must, must read this chapter on communication in... Uh, um, Don Miguel Ruiz Jr.'s book. Oh my God, it's brilliant, fabulous. Um, so and so he he ends the he ends it with this: the richness of communication. We want to be clear that communication isn't only a tool to solve problems. It is also a paintbrush that helps create the beautiful work of art that is your relationship. In this regard, sharing positive communication on a regular basis is key to helping your relationship thrive. I love this sentence. It's a paintbrush that helps create the beautiful work of art that is your relationship. But you see, that's not available to us when we are not engaging our spiritual tools and our spiritual understanding in this very psychological realm and human realm of our relationships. So the fourth thing I wanna share with you now is the model of communication that really helps make all of this clear. So I am going to need, I'm gonna need probably 10 volunteers. Could I have 10 volunteers just come up here and sit on the platform with me? Ready, go. 10, first 10, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 2 more, come on up here, come on up here, 2 more, 9, 10, perfect, perfect, okay, good, all right, fabulous, tell me your name, Angie, Angie I, know you, I know you, Angie, stand right here, you are the, you are one of the people in this, okay, uh, let's see, we'll start over here, um, you're going to be the other person in this, okay, now everybody has to bunch in here, just a little bit in between, okay, so in a communication, we have a sender and a receiver, so, so you want to say hi to your receiver, and receiver receives hi and gives it back, right, basic communication, that's what's happening, okay, now, now, you, you are, uh, let's have you stand behind Jen, you are all of her past patterns, okay? So, <laughs> so, so, so rather than saying any words, we're gonna, we're gonna have you make motions that interfere with her communication. So you're her past pattern, okay? Jeremy, you, you get to be her past patterns here, okay? Stand right behind here, her past patterns, okay. Now, you are all the voices in her head. Stand right here, I'm and so sorry. you're you're the voices in her head, and you two are going to make movements that are going to right. In her, and you get to be the voices in her head, okay? Now, so you're going to stand right here in front. You're going to stand right here in front. Now, you are all of the um, all the ways in which in which she wished she showed up in the world that she doesn't. Okay, all right. You get to be the same thing over here. You get to be the noise in the culture, in the family, in the room. You get to be the noise. 
Okay. All right, so now I would like to see the movements of the past patterns. Show us your past patterns, movements that interfere with communication. Show us your, show us your movement. I'm, we're going to do this, but she can't see you, right? So, right, so you got to do something. She can't see you. She can't see your past patterns. They're good then, right? No. <laughs> Jeremy, okay, we're going to make your past patterns a little more visible. There we go. Okay, now let's see the movements of the voices in your head. Okay, voices in your head. Okay, so now all the ways that, that they want to show up. Okay, now you get to be really loud. You're the noise in the, in the world. Okay, now, Jen, could you tell her, uh, could you tell her something? <laughs> okay, stop. Okay, stop. So do you know what she said? Heard her. You heard her, right? <laughs> could you make any sense of it, any meaning out of it? All you could hear was the words, right? The yeah. words? Okay, so, so, so what's happening here? The three of you stand right here, stand, stand right together. Come over here. You guys are the encoders. As Jen is, as Jen is trying to speak, these are the encoders. So all this stuff is getting encoded here. It's going through the noise here, right? <laughs> Yeah, exactly. Do that again. Do that, right? That, that. It's going through that, right? And what are you guys? Stand all together over here. Jeremy, come out from behind. What are you? you are the decoders. Okay? Do you see what ha what's what I'm saying? Okay. So, so you say, hey, I want to meet you for lunch. And it has to go, it has been encoded by, through all of this goes through all the noise, and then it gets decoded by all of this, and what do you say? Oh, I don't know, I, do you really want to go to lunch? Are you sure? Are you sure? There you go, right? <laughs> Beautiful, and so what do you send back? Are you sure? That's gotten encoded in all of this, goes through the noise, and then gets decoded, and when she says, are you sure, what do you hear? Uh, maybe she doesn't really wanna go. Maybe she doesn't really want to go. Maybe she doesn't really like me. Do you see? Thank you all. Let's give them a big round of applause for participating. <laughs> so in the short form, that's what, that's, that's what it looks like. This is called the Shannon Weaver model of communication. This is what's happening every single time you open your mouth. And every time you're trying to communicate with somebody, this is what's going on. And so, and so when Karen talked at the first service, at the first week, about how important it is to love ourselves, do you see, we're, we're trying to clear out some of those things that are encoded in our past, right? Those things that are getting in the way. And then, and then when we're doing the, the deep and serious work to actually see the truth of you and to, and to lift you up, do you see we're trying, to get, we're trying to get through all of the encoding and decoding, all of the false ideas, past patterns, false beliefs, projections, assumptions, and conclusions that we have that literally stand between us and that other person. And then um, Ariana gave us a beautiful bzz, bzz, right? Low let no, it's just noise, bzz, 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 right? It's, you know, and it's from everything, job and TV and, 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 and family and whatever. It's, and all of that is contributing. Is it, ever, is it any wonder that we miscommunicate? Now, the good news which is why um, I am a minister and not a psychologist. The good news is that we understand from our spiritual teaching that we can clear out as much as possible the encoding and decoding from falsehood in, and rewrite it as truth. The encoding and decoding will never not happen. That is how the process works, and that's how we're designed. But do you see, the more that I see the truth in myself, the more I see the truth about you, the more I want to lift you up into who you are and let you lift me up into who I am, that I am clearing out those filters, and I'm, and I'm encoding the way I choose to see it. Do you see? And I'm decoding the way I choose to receive it to the best of our ability. 
right, to the best of our ability. And so being able to stand then as the sender and the receiver, as open and, and as present as we possibly can, being willing to talk about what's happening between us. Do you see, when we're willing to talk about what's happening between us, a lot of this nonsense actually gets illuminated. We get to see it. We get to bring it to the forefront. We get to see it in ourselves. We get to see it in each other. And because we're doing this in the context of a positive, spiritual, healthy relationship, we are not using it to beat each other up. Right? We're using it for our own well-being and for the well-being of the relationship. Because we are now at very intimate, real, intimate conversation. We're being authentic. We're being vulnerable. We're being open. And we're really trying to clear some, all of this out so that we can truly, truly hold the vision of love that we have for each other. So there you go. The four most important things that I know about communication. And um, let us use them together well. So I invite you to go within with me. And so as we take this moment to just go within and just let all that information kind of rattle around and we don't have to try to figure it out too much. We just, we, just let it, we just let it settle, settle in our consciousness. We open our hearts to whatever is here that illuminates something. And we open ourselves to the presence of the divine. The divine which is in fact seeking to express itself in, through, and as each one of us. That infinite power and presence that is the truth of life itself. Let us affirm and declare this morning that every time we open our mouths, we actually convey the truth of being. We allow our words to be in alignment with our spiritual understanding. We allow our tone of voice to be in alignment with the presence that is love itself. We allow our whole being to acquiesce into the deep and profound truth that we live in a safe, abundant, loving universe. And in so doing, our whole being moves into alignment and into congruence with who we are and who we came here to be. And so we bless our relationships as the playground in which we grow, in which we explore, in which we discover so much more about ourselves, about life, about love, and most importantly, about that one infinite divine presence that is the source of all creation. Knowing it is so, we let it be, and so it is.